أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم I seek refuge in Allah جل جلاله from the accursed shaytan I beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to place in my heart and the end in the hearts of the believers a love and a compassion to forgive to seek Allah Ta'ala's reward in forgiving to forget that in which shaitan wants us to remember and wants us to dwell on I seek protection in Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala from all of the tricks of the deceiving shaitan from Iblis now there is a khutbah uh, last week last Friday where and it's very important to understand that Iblis exists shaitan Lucifer as some refer to him the biblical context of it um, fool me once and I'm a fool uh, this statement is really meant for those who know the Quran the statement is meant for those who understand that there's a pact between Allah and Iblis so if you know that what the pack is and you understand that they have an agreement until the day of resurrection then you allow yourself to be fooled because the information is very clear there are only two destinations in the hereafter this world is a transient it's a passing by situation this world is moving on and each and in, in, each and every individual should take into account what happened to yesterday what happened to a year ago what happened to 20 years ago what happened to those whom were on this earth 200 years ago they left it's gone on it's going today earlier is gone the present is going tomorrow is only guaranteed to us in front of our Creator that's the only day that is guaranteed to us we cannot guarantee each other even the next moment now this is about shaitan this is really about the tricks of the shaitan and it's very brief it's not going to dive into you know his makeup and you know his image or how it is that he functions the fact that he was the first jinn created how many children he has we're not going to do all of that but what we are going to do is simplify it so that people will understand that as far as those two dest destinations are concerned there are only two means of obtaining those destinations as far as the one who is a mature individual in Islam now the mature individual in, 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 in Islam the male versus the mature in Americanism <laughs> two different things um, and the fact that we as believers in the Quran we as believers in Allah we who claim to submit ourselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cannot and must understand that it is completely unacceptable that we turn our back on the information on the message which is very simple that he has revealed the moment we do that we are doing actions that are pleasing to Iblis and they're destined for the hellfire it's that simple we do what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given 
us the message to do and the command to do, the command to do and the order to do, or we are denying him. We are denying his message. And this message, as long as we continue to do things that we keep saying, what's wrong with that? The first thing we should be asking, where is Allah in this? Where is the command, the order of Allah in this? We're supposed to be witnessing. We witness. We say our shahada. We're supposed to be witnessing to the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. We, we testify to that. Adam alayhi salatu was salam was the khalifa of Allah on this earth. And through that silsila, to that chain itself, we male, we are successors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on earth. We have a responsibility. Iblis, he definitely has been mentioned in the Quran over and over and over and over again in his tricks. He will command you and you will change even the creation of Allah. Allah Ta'ala said that these are his tricks. Taking and making human beings gods. Making a way of life a god. As long as I'm all right, that's all that matters. You are right here on this earth because you have been given a blessing. You have been given another chance. We've been given another moment to make it right, to ask Allah Ta'ala to work on us. You have been given another moment from Him to make it right and pass away on good terms. That's why you can say what you're saying, so make it right. Because in a, to hold yourself accountable. You think you have everything right, just look at your errors, your, your mistakes, and realize that the day is going to come those are going to be shown to you and you will not be able to make them right any longer. We all have to consider our moment. This very moment could be our moment. If it is not, it's because Allah Ta'ala is giving us another chance. Our Creator is giving us another opportunity to get it right. The moment we say to ourselves, Look how good I, 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 I look how good I look. Don't I look good? Don't I look cute? Don't I look fine? I'm wearing the heck out of this suit. Muslims who recite the Fatiha, this is immediately denying Iyakanabudu. You alone. Underline alone. So since you are showing off and this is a big thing, then how can you pray and it be accepted? This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dislikes the most. Which of your prayers or which of your Ramadans or which of your centers are you entering to make you think that it's over, this is it. Those who do not even go to centers, those who do not even go to mosques, those who go to churches, those who go to synagogues. Look back in time. Look at all of those whom you, 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 you looked up to and they were your icons. They were your models. Which one of them was able to pay their way out of the grave? Which one of them was able to say, you know what? I saw something really strange talking about coming and taking my soul. And I said, hey, buddy, I'll pay you, you know, whatever you want. But that's why that's how I lost a couple of my houses. That's how I lost my beach house. It does not happen. We take in on, or we say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. A twin declaration of faith. Twin declaration. But what do we talk about? What are we really about? 
It's a twin declaration of faith. What is the essence of faith? Do we understand that we have a responsibility with this testimony? We have a covenant. We have an agreement with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the essence of faith, even at, at this particular level, it is words and action, loving and hating for the sake of Allah. Jalla Jalaluhu, it increases and decreases. But what are we doing? Is this what, I mean, with the love that we have for the world, the love that we have for status of the world, the love we have for what shaitan loves, the hate that we have for whatever it is that shaitan dislikes. How do we get over ourselves? How do we manage to say to ourselves, you know what, it's all okay. We know that we're not doing right by Quran, what Allah Ta'ala says, but it's okay. Everything's going to be all right. That's the Americanism. <laughs> the Americanism says, continue as you are, don't change anything for nobody. For nobody. So, when the Quran is brought, when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's life is mentioned, his companions, I don't have to listen to this. This is nonsense. I mean, I can interpret it however it is that I want to interpret it. And this is another way, this is another deed of shaitan. Shaitan doesn't want you to be humble. Shaitan does not want you to accept the truth and embrace the truth. No. Shaitan wants you to, to, to live a lie so you can be deeper and deeper and deeper into lies. That's what shaitan wants. Because when, and it's a very, I'm not a muhaddith, and I'm not going to try and say and claim to be one either. But when a man came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, very important story. And this man, very famous hadith, said how bad he was, how many people he has killed, how many people he has robbed went on to say he slept with this person's wife and he slept with that person's mother. On and on and on and on, Rasul alayhi salatu was salam, in his wisdom, he listened to him. In his calmness, he listened to him. He could have had the sahabas come capture him and take him away. But he listened to him until he got to the part where he said, and I lie, and then he responded in earnest and said, stop lying, don't lie, don't lie, don't lie. And this is what he received. This is the only message he needed to, to get and to apply it and to act upon it and to portray it. And so time went by. Time went by, and he came back a completely changed man, all because of working on changing his speech from lying to telling the truth, from wanting to tell lies to wanting to tell the truth, from wanting to help lies and aid lies and turn a blind eye on lies and allow lies to continue to confronting the speaking out against. This changed him. And for that, I want to say that the biggest crime that Allah mentions, He says it's a lie. He says it. فَمَنْ أَظْلَمُ مِمَّنْ كَذَبَ What is the worst crime than كَذَبَ عَلَى اللَّهِ than you lie on Allah? Like the Yahud who have deceived the Nasara. And now here you are following Yahud and Nasara. As good as an individual as, as may be, people, the whole world can see this individual and they say, oh, talk a storm about this individual. If this individual is associating with Allah Jalla Jalaluhu, stubborn on it, and you know the type, oh, I have my own God. I can do what I want to do. Some of them say to the point, why should I worship one when I can worship so many? This is the type of shaitan. 
This is what shaitan wants us to do. Because he knows the moment we associate with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we lose the essence of faith. Then our oath means nothing. Majority of people do not consult, do not reflect upon who they are to even know who Allah is, to even seek Allah's protection from the shaitan. And that's why for today, I have to say, by all means, anyone and everyone, make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to recognize and to understand the tricks of the shaitan as Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu did and those who were the best around the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and have a firmness, not be cowards, not be hypocrites, take away our arrogance and take away our pride, allow us to subdue our lower whims, turn our backs on this world and seek for that in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has in the akhirah, for that is greater for us. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enable us to stand firm and confront the shaitan, the iblis, la'natullahi alayhi, with all of his tricks and all of his allies and all of his associates, for indeed they are the enemies of Allah Jalla Jalaluhu, and whomsoever dies on their hands in the path of Allah Jalla Jalaluhu, he promises them the reward in the hereafter. And that's all we are seeking for. We are seeking for his gratitude and we are seeking for his mercy in this affair, in all of our affairs. And for that, we pray that he come to our rescue in all of our matters. And as long as we're able to say so, we have complete and absolute certainty that he has accepted it already. My beloved siblings of this humanity, this Americanism, colonialism, westernized capitalism has failed. Many have not seen it. But on an educational level, it has failed. F failed how? It has, in fact, encouraged people to remain in the shackles of slavery instead of being liberated, withholding information on economic finances and on so many other matters whilst putting people in debt to where they cannot get out. That's on a social level, but it's also on a social level taking away in, in weaning away the masculinity, cutting and breaking ties of family, kinship, things that can only be encouraged by Iblis. It's in the Quran. Those who understand is in Surah Baqarah. Splitting up the families is a means of the shaitan. This is their first objective. This Americanism, where young people do not respect their elders, is because they do not respect 